Live from Los Angeles on the campus of USC, it is Pac-12 Women's Volleyball. Inside the Galen Center, the USC Trojans welcome the Oregon Date Beavers. Hi everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm Amory Anderson alongside NCAA champion Holly McPeak. And Holly, both of these programs coming off a loss. What should we expect today? Well, USC is looking for the right lineup, moving towards experience at this point in the season. So that's interesting. In Oregon State, very good. Strength in the middle, but very strong on the left side. Key for USC, as always, is Samantha Bricio. Samantha Bricio is so important for this USC team. She brings leadership but in a quiet way. She gets it done. One of the best servers in the country. The rainy Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Week can change a match just with her serve. Meanwhile, Oregon State has one of the most exciting new players in the conference. Mary Kay Marshall is a true Freshman of the Year candidate. Mary Kate Marshall carries a huge load for this Oregon State team to come in, play six rotations. That means she's passing and setting, also leading this team in kill, and she's been very consistent, the Oregon State Beavers. Oregon State is one of the top blocking teams in the conference. Will they be able to quiet the big hitters of USC? First serve coming up after break. Pac-12 Women's Volleyball is presented by Tashikara. We've got the ball, you bring the game. Welcome back to Los Angeles, USC and Oregon State about to get underway. Oregon State has split each one of their conference trips so far this year. They've already got a loss to take. Let's take a look at their lineup, Holly. Besides Mary Kay Marshall, who's critical? Well, Erica Nassar, number 40 in the middle, has been Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Week several times. Very strong at the net. One of the things, Oregon State, average height, 6'2", so they've got a lot of size. Taking a look at the Tasha Carr lineup from USC, you mentioned there were going to be some changes in their lineup. How so? Elise Rudden's number 11 on the outside for freshman Lauren Gillis. That's the move towards experience. And then Emily Young for Haley Crone at the setting position. So Elise Pisa-Sigola and Emily Young will run the offense for USC today. Mick Haley still looking to find right mixture for this team and experienced coach Mick Haley is an understatement, a national championship coach. He's frustrated this year. Well, he knows he has the talent. He knows he likes what he sees in practice. He's got depth but just has been puzzled by some of the levels of life from his team. Meanwhile, Terry Lasevich on the other side, also so experienced 12 years as the head coach of the USA national team, and he said that this is the most talented team he's ever had at Oregon State. For Oregon State, this is the best team he's had, and they've got depth. That's something that you want as a coach, so you're not one injury away from your season falling apart. Depth is so important. Elite Pizza Segola as for serve. And right down the line, meet the freshman, Mary Kate Marshall. Number 15 in black, Mary Kate Marshall found his team. There's a huge rock to Ogons and Monabu in front of her. Just a smart swing. by number nine, Darby Reader. Reader back to serve, leads his team in service aces. Pizza Segola sets Brucia from the court, ripped and dug. Number seven, right on the left side. Pushing her, you usually see her attacking from the right side, but look at the power from Ebony Wanabu. 
Samantha Bricio back to serve, one of the best servers in the country, as you mentioned. From the right side, Oregon State gets themselves out of the rotation. Laura Schalke, number 22, but coming out of the game right now, but that's just a smart swing. At six foot five, she saw the opening in the corner of USC's defense. And every time, Holly, that you're able to get Bricio off of that service line with just one serve under her belt is a huge victory. Wanabu, cross court kill. That's something that we're seeing from Ebony Wanabu. She's working hard to get a better volleyball. She coming off that back injury. Watch her get her feet inside to this ball. High contact, power in the sharp angle for USC. Yeah, you mentioned the effort that she's putting in through yoga and nutrition, and it's making a difference. McKaylee's very pleased with what he's seeing cross the other way and Holly it's turned to a shootout well Oregon State is passing the ball extremely well able to run that quick middle so important look at passer putting the ball right in Taylor Woods hands for Oregon State Kaitlin Driscoll comes into the front row alongside Amanda Brown Taylor Woods Ruddens takes her first swing of the day a little bit of trouble swing by Caitlin Driscoll. Tries to go deep, just too much power on that power dip. And Mikhaili really looking for something special from his team today. This team had started off 6-0 in the season, then lost 6-7. They thought they'd turn the corner a bit. That loss Friday frustrated him. I'm not sure if that was ever over. Oh, that ball set a little bit too low for Caitlin Driscoll to clear the net. This is important rotation. Only two hitters in the front row for Oregon State. They need to pass the ball well. Meanwhile, Ebony Wabu, the sophomore from Fairview, Texas, serving. Pretty set, and it's crushed by Brown. A man, Brown, good off one foot, but the USC middle blocker, Hannah Schwer, is not getting out. She's pulling off, leaving only one blocker in front of Brown. USC has won 29 consecutive sets against Oregon State, but they've never faced an Oregon State team that is as deep as this one. USC needs to pass the ball better. Emily Young in there for Haley Crone for USC running the offense. Ball slipping between her hands there, but there where her length comes in handy. On the outside, Breesy, a beautiful control. Unfortunate, just some confusion trying to get to the ball for Emily Young. And Emily Young's a player who's been, she's set, can set the ball, but she's been playing opposite, more of a hitter mentality than a setter mentality. And as you mentioned, just a little bit of uh, communication error. This is the first match where she's starting in this position. She has started sets in this position, Holly, but I don't think you see her start a match with this year in this position. USC sides out, get out of that rotation. Important one for them. Elise Rudd is back to serve. She's had just two full weeks of training after having her tonsils removed and missing nine games in three weeks. But see, one of the things they're really trying to do is serve more aggressive and put the pressure on the serve receive from Oregon State. That ball just sailing long. Sailing long. As Rudnick comes out, Anne-Marie Schmidt comes in. High school All-American. In the backcourt passing. Bricio just unwinds and unloads. One of the things Samantha Bricio, number two in white, does better than most people is get her feet to the ball. She gets it around it, contacts the ball on her right side. Beautiful, sharp angle for USC. Tanner Young makes use of the block. That is one of the benefits of having Emma Young, the lefty, number 20 in white right there in the front row, setting the offense. But she's a lefty and can attack any tight ball to the net. Overpass. Young's outside to Briso. And a net violation for the Beavers. 
Luckers trying to shut down Bricio for Oregon State. Let's watch the blockers look like Nassar for Oregon State in the net. Long. You see USC making the effort to serve the ball tough and put pressure on, but two service errors back to back. Lila Toner now in and serving it for Oregon State. Toner out of Turkey. She had an ankle sprain earlier this season. Perfect pass, outside. And Mary Kate Marshall again, comes to the front row and gets enough kill. The interesting thing about Leela Toner, number two, on the service line right now, she led this Oregon State team in kills. Now this freshman, Mary Kate Marshall, with a kill right there, leading the team, Leela Toner, on the bench for Oregon State. Yeah, Mary Kate Marshall, seventh all-time right now for Oregon State in freshman kill per season, and we're not even half through the season yet. From the backcourt, Toner's a nice swing on the ball. Bricio nearly takes off somebody's head, but it's wide. USC picking up a lot of balls defensively. Just unable to convert. Toner continues to serve. And the Beavers build a lead. It's going to be a, not even a free ball over. And Mick Haley has seen enough. Pressure from the service line coming from Oregon State. Serving the ball extremely well. Mick Haley, a former setter himself, talking very calmly with Emily Young. Samantha Bricio does a great job with her big swing. It's just a little bit wide. And Beavers are in the driver's seat. Beavers in the driver's seat off the serving of Vila Toner, this Oregon State team. Second in the conference in blocks per set. One of the strongest teams. You look at some of their other rankings, Holly, a lot of that is due to the devotion of this freshman class that came in as they arrived on campus early. Well, this summer in July, they came in, the freshmen live with the seniors, condition, practice together, but not under coach's supervision, but just committed to this team. And they got to know each other and they found a lot of team chemistry. They certainly did. Two freshmen contributing mightily, including Mary Kate Marshall. Four more are red shooting, red shirting this year. Brizio trying her best to swing, but the defense is strong. Longest rally of the match. And Brizio, so smart, changes the pace. Not easy to get the ball to drop again. Oregon State, but Brizio high off hands for a kill. And that really is the beauty of Samantha Bricio. She did not, she's not just a pounder, she is so multifaceted. Alicia Pizza Segola about to serve. Pizza Segola has been setting for this team all year as part of 6 2. Peter's goal of digs, and who's going to pick it up? There's a little hesitation for Schmidt. It's important when your set digs the ball that you know who's going to set. Usually the middle sets in transition, but Ogans was not down and ready to run that ball down. And is that some of the challenge for USC because of the change in their lineup? They're just not quite smooth as to where everybody's going right now. Correct. Peter's goal of digs. Ogans on it. To the kill for Wano. Number seven in white, Ebony Wanabu. High contact, consistently getting her feet to the ball. Looks so much better than we saw just a couple weeks ago. Just finding her volleyball rhythm right now. Haley Rudden's, or Elise Rudden's back up front with Wanabu and Ogums. As Bricio unloads base. That's what Samantha Abrizio does better than almost anybody else in the country. Micah Hancock and Samantha Abrizio, in my mind, the two best servers. 
That was the 56th service ace of the season. Fabricio, next closest on the team. Gillis with none. That gives you an idea of power. And there you see some of that confusion with Wanabu and Pizza Sago. Well, that's the frustration. Just communication. Everybody going to their spot and nobody taking that ball. Just a traffic jam in the middle. Kind of looked like the 405. Yeah, it did. Exactly. And it's doubly painful, perhaps, because it takes Bricio off the service line. And she can really get on roll for this team. Absolutely. She had two blistering serves there. So that one, doubly painful. Here's Rachel Beener. Behind the setter, and it's ripped by Brown. Oregon State just doing a fantastic job running their middles off foot, one foot behind setter. Amanda Brown with one blocker in front of her. Consistently, that's her third or fourth kill from that spot, hitting back angle. And we cannot overstate the improvement of Oregon State this season. They played Stanford tough. They played Washington very tough and took a sip off of them. Terry Laskevich, so pleased with what he's got in Beavers. Absolutely. This is a confident group, really feeling like they can compete with anybody in the country. And he kept telling us earlier this week and even before the match, the depth that this team has, he has not experienced while in Corvallis. Mary Kate Marshall swing hits the antenna before it hits the block. Ogum serve goes to Buner and Marshall. Mary Kate Marshall, 15 in black, gets her feet there. She had one blocker in front of her, able to hit that sharp angle. One of the things I'm seeing consistently is the middle block. Well, she jumped with the setter on that play, so that's not Hannah Schreer's fault. Good isolation by Taylor Woods, the setter for Oregon State. A nice serve for Marshall. Her Ruddens takes a swing. bit messy Oregon State ball. Ball set a little bit low for Hannah Schreer. Hannah Schreer had her season best night on Friday against the Oregon Ducks. Brizio from the backcourt goes to work. Samantha Brizio so effective out of the back row this season. Gets her feet there. Again, that's discipline. As it are getting your feet there, hitting the ball in a sweet spot where you can tack it anywhere on the court. Want to move back to serve. Michaeli has told us he wants her as a six rotation player. They'd like to set her for the backcourt as well. Young sets Wanabu from the backcourt. And Mary Kate Marshall from the backcourt answers. Rachel Buner, number seven in black for Oregon. They digging some big balls and allowing her team to swing for kills. Mary Kate Marshall with the kill out of the back row. And Mary Kate Marshall came to this Oregon State team through Terleskevich's extensive connections. Well, He's just got such a history in the game. Ruth Nelson went to grad school with Terry Laskevich. And Ruth Nelson, of course, formerly the coach of Houston, also coached Mary Kay Marshall in her high school years. In Texas, yes, and that was the connection. Ruth Nelson called Terry Laskevich and said, hey, I have this young player who's raw, but wow, she has so much potential. She came to Oregon State camp, loved it. And the rest is history. Marshall in the backcourt right now. Going to take a swing at this ball. Laskevich, first coach to offer her a scholarship, and she stayed with it. There she passes again, and it goes to the middle. Off of Marshall's pass, they run the middle. Erica Nasser, number 40, has been putting up great defense numbers, but shows she can add to the offense as well for the Beavers. And the youngest goes outside. Bricio 
a little bit long, no touch, Beaver ball. Interesting with Emily Young, number 20, the setter for USC. She doesn't look very confident running the middle. I've not seen her run end balls to the middle yet. McHaley takes a timeout. Perhaps to talk about that issue. Oregon State extended the lead. Saturday, it's a play. USC is storied program, but they are trailing the first set here against Oregon State. And it's been a rough go for USC this season compared to last state. The biggest problem for them, you and I talk about it, is that they're blocking. As you can look at the ranks, they're last in conference in blocking, but they've got some strikes. Well, with, with the size that they have on their team and the talent, there's no reason for them being last in blocking. But they're a strong serving team. They're trying to replace some senior All-Americans, specifically Natalie Haglund, who was just everything to the USC team. Alexis Olgard in the middle. I mean, they're replacing some seniors, All-American seniors, with freshmen. So it's tough. It's a rebuilding year. Emily Ams goes outside to Brisco. She's doing everything she can. Brisco, six kills. So much pressure on Samantha Brisco to put the ball away, especially when Haley Crone is not in there running the offense. She's much more comfortable running that middle. Perfect pass, speaking of middle. Nasser in the back court. Again, Erica Nasser, number 40 in the middle. She's a little bit undersized, but fiery and athletic for Oregon State. Get that, finds the corner, perfect location for the kill. Yeah, and Terry Lescavit, look, she has an edge when she plays that this team values. Toner's serve is great, and ace. Every time Leela Toner's on the back line, Oregon State is scoring points. Yeah, that's her second ace of the day already. We mentioned that she had an ankle sprain earlier this year. She suffered it by falling off a stool in the locker room. Very unglamorous way to suffer an ankle sprain. And again, they don't go to the middle, they go to Wannabe, but she delivers. Ebony Wannabe playing six rotations and making herself available to hit her in the back row. I really like that addition for USC. And yet Holly is former NCAA champion said every time they pass up the middle, they've got a perfect pass. What does that do? Well, both middles put up very nice numbers and can be very effective. Just frees up the whole offense. When you run your middle, you've got to attack out of the middle and it opens things up on the outside. It's set point for the Beaver as Darby Reeder comes back to serve. Mary Kate Marshall up front. A service error for Oregon State and they're trying to serve tough. But it remains, of course, set point. Riccio to the back one to serve. And the service error will end the set. Oregon State takes set number one. Oregon State won the serve and pass battle, and that's the beginning of everything. We'll see what adjustments USC makes. It has been a season full of adjustments for the women of Troy. This Pac-12 vote. After USC had won 29 consecutive sets over Oregon State, the Beavers won set one this match. Well, in the story for me was no offense out of the middle for USC. Some of their most effective hitters statistically. The hitting percentage, you see the edge go 344. Just communication and passing for USC was not there. And look, the issue for USC for sure is really coming out of their setting for the last couple of weeks. Haley made that change today in terms of having a young start out of the middle. And as you say, if you're not setting the middle, I mean, it's set out of the front, and she's just not setting the middle. Since 2008, that was the first set won by Oregon State. That's a big deal. That's a confidence builder. Not so much on the other side. USC needs, these are all great volleyball players just trying to find the chemistry and the lineup that works the best where they can all excel. They just have not been able to find it. Mixing personnel, 
Coach Mahaley talked prior to this match about going with more experience. Yeah, that's the difference for Mickey. I mean, he definitely has the depth. Some of it is young. He got Jordan Dunn, who's a young middle. Well, he's got Brittany Abercrombie, who's very talented, but also a freshman opposite. And he said, right now, where this team has been a little bit up and down, I'm going to go with experience. And don't forget about Lauren oh, Gillis, yeah. who's been starting most of the season outside for USC. Very talented out of Indiana. Strong passer, just struggling lately. And that's where Coach McHaley wants to go with Elise Retta to give her a chance. She's a more experienced player, high volleyball IQ from Elise Reddit. Yes, and if you look at the lineup that USC put on the court for this match, for this set, there is not a freshman among them, and Ruddens is included. Meanwhile, Darby Reeder starts off serving. She goes right at Ruddens. From the backcourt, Brissio flies in, get touch and a kill. Very confident setting Samantha Brissio out of the back row is USC. She has been so consistent this year. Abricio, no surprise, 14 swings already in this match, more than anybody on the floor on either team. And as she ended last set with the service error, this begins this set with the same. That's what you get when you get somebody who serves so tough, though. Absolutely. She almost got Leela Toner for Oregon State in the head. Toner did a great job playing a little dodgeball. Rachel Buner serves. And there's the middle. That's the first kill from a middle attacker on the USC team. This match so important. Ogans gets up. Good attack. Yeah, for Ogans, just her third swing. She'd love to hit Pizza Segola's ball, but now, of course, she's rotated to the backcourt. Ruddens on the triple block. And the block brings it straight back. Setter 21, Taylor Woods for Oregon State setting up that block. Big, solid block, and then Amanda Brown with the assist. And maybe that's the biggest change we've seen overall for this Oregon State team. They are 10th in the nation in box per set, second in the conference just behind Washington. Well, the interesting thing, yes, they have size, but they're being very effective as blockers. Again, Samantha Brito, I think she's hitting for a higher percentage out of the back row than the front row, and that's not easy to do. Wannabe serve is solid. Outside Driscoll keeps it in play. Woods goes to Mary Kate Marshall from the back. And a kill for Elise Reddens. Elise Reddens getting her feet there. That ball was set way inside in transition. Set from off the net. Look at her get her feet there. High corner swing. Very smart by Elise Ruddens for USC. It's been a scary and tough year for Elise Ruddens. She got very ill with strep and then having those tonsils removed. She lost some weight and strength. Missed nine games about three weeks. And Mick Haley's saying just two weeks back. Full practice, but he wants to get the opportunity to really show what she can do. Amanda Brown has been so effective on that slide attack. That's her fifth kill. She's five kills, five swings for Oregon State. And puts up an off lane. Nice serve. There is Brown as well. Woods goes back to Marshall from backcourt. And Ruddens contributes again with a kill. Oregon State did a lot of nice balls. That one unable to control. Rudden comes out for a well-deserved break as Anne-Marie Schmidt comes in to serve. And you see Rudden taking a moment, talking with McHaley. Talking about those hands and not getting used, perhaps. 
Nasser again. Erica Nasser again. Kill out of the middle for Oregon State. They're passing the ball well, able to run that offense. Taylor Wood, the senior setter for this Oregon State team. You can really see the length for Oregon State up front right now. Shout, Driscoll and Nassau. It's Driscoll through the block. That's a big kill for Driscoll. Only her second one that brings her, she was hit negative for Oregon State, the only hitter who struggled so far in this match. Might just be a great rotation for Oregon State right now with Wood serving. There's a little long. And you mentioned it once at the beginning of the match, but it bears repeating that the Oregon State team averages 6-2 in height, even including all of their BSs and defensive specialists. What a set by Taylor Woods, number 21. A bump set just puts it on a dime for Lord. Now, this is a trouble play, but Taylor Woods turns it into something special. And so does Shout, Laura Shout, number 22, down the line. And again, there's communication there's people running into each other on USC's side. But Oregon takes it right with the block. Almost another disaster for USC, but they save it. Watch them save this crash. And then Alicia Ogum's in transition in the middle. Big block for USC. That's the way to recover. And that's what happens when you got new players halfway through the season. Leche Pizza Segola comes in to serve now. It's a sigh of relief, perhaps, because they're used to that. Ogums again from the middle. Alicia Ogums with her second kill. That one coming off an easy overpass. Pass, Woods goes back. Another big one from Shout. Beautiful set again by Taylor Woods. Oregon State passing the ball well. She's able to run all her options. Isolates only one blocker out there in front of her. Laura Shout. Six fives got a lot of length to put that ball away. Shout out of Fulham, Oregon. Just five minutes or so from Corvallis. Look at that dig. Bricio getting everything she's got. Wabu takes a big swing and gets the kill. The emergence of Ebony Wanabu just getting back in shape, coming back off that back injury is key to USC finding their way. She's so effective offensively at the net. Lots of power. Produces big numbers for this USC team. And Ebony Wanbu played club volleyball in her high school years with Mary Kate Marshall, number 15 in black, that we've been talking about for Oregon State. There's a familiarity between those two. Ace. Samantha Bricio with her second ace of the match, but she's got the Oregon State team in trouble. Look at her attacking the scene between the two passers. And again, a tough serve and communication error there. Not a communication error, excuse me, a missed opportunity. Well, the ball was passed tight to the net. Taylor Woods did her best to lift that ball. Just, just a misconnection between setter and middle hitter. Terry Laskevich takes out Toner of the service receive, who Brito served the last two times. Wants to give a different look. Well, as Oregon State gets the point. USC trying to run that middle just unsuccessfully. It's the right idea, just a little bit of a misconnection. And the blocker, Amanda Brown, does not have to move for Oregon State. They need to set the seams, make the blockers move. Perfect pass. They go back. Wanabu has plenty of space. 
Mary K. Marshall has none and still makes it work. Mary K. Marshall has been so <laughs> impressive. Number 15 in black. She has Alicia Ogums and Ebony Wanaboo in front of her. Watch this, the size of the block in front of her, and she finds a way to put it down under their arm for the kill. Bricio from the backward. Mary Kate Marshall again, the outlet. And there's Fiddle. Opens it to Sigola. But that's what I like. Attacking the seam. Smart set by Alice to Sigola to Alicia Ogum. They're not right in front of the blocker. Create some space. Find a kill. They're looking like Montana to right. Those two really have fantastic connection. Ogum's down the backcourt. Good serve again. Impossible angle for Mary Kate Marshall. Bricio rips a hole in the triple block. Oregon State tried to slow her down with the triple block. She just hammers it through there. Interesting, Holly, you mentioned the success she's having from the backcourt. Why is it so difficult to defend her from backcourt? Well, she gets her feet there. She's attacking from a high position, and she sees the court well. Just finding the opening, she's very successful at that. Not easy to do. Marshall got the touch. Hit Beavers. Mary Kate Marshall, 15 in black, finding ways to get kills in the Pac-12. High hands on that last swing. Marshall, seven kills. Wanabu. Block was waiting for. Marshall gets the dig. It's up. And no good. Hannah Schreer. First kill for Hannah Schreer. USC out of the middle. But that's not her own team setting her. That's an over dig. For USC, this is such a critical match because Mick Haley is telling us they're going to go on the road and they've got a Thursday-Sunday split. So they're going to spend a lot of time on the road and you inevitably lose training. And of course, school will focus a bunch of other things during that kind of time. Yeah, that's the tough thing when you travel like that Wednesday through Sunday. You can't get the training that you can when you're home. And so this time it's USC in the driver's seat, a five-point lead. How will Beavers answer back? I'm Mike Ryan. Welcome back to Galen Center on the campus of USC. The women of Troy in the driver's seat in set number two. They are 18th in the nation, USC is. And we still got four unbeatens in around the country, those top four teams. Yeah, at this point in the season, to see four unbeaten teams is pretty impressive. I don't think we're going to see that much longer just because the grind of the, of the conference schedule is really tough. And we mentioned the USC with the Thursday, Sunday, so, which they do have next week in the Bay Area, but it was Oregon State who's going to be on the road for both of the Thursday, Sunday splits next two weeks. Shut down Amanda Brown out of the middle. Big block by Elise Ruddins, and then gets the overdig for the kill. Ebony Wanabu from the service line has done great things for USC today. Tough serving. Woods. Oh, it's flushed down the line. Once, but not again. Amanda Brown not happy they stopped her last time. This is a sweet set by Taylor Woods. Sets it wide, riding on the antenna, blocker is inside, boom, down the line. The message there, how dare you block my ball. She takes a well-deserved break, Sydney Francis serving. Serves Bricio. And Ruttons coming into her own, looking smooth every swing. Whittingham delivered a great pass. And she will again. Emily Young. Left hand. 
That's one of the reasons Coach Mick Haley likes to use Emily Young. Lefty setter in the front row can do that at will. Attack with the left hand, puts it away for USC kill. USC looking much more comfortable in this second set. Six point lead, the biggest lead, largest lead for them in this match. And this time, Nasser says no go to Young. Well, there you see the competitive personality of Eric Nasser in the middle. She's like, I'm not losing this joust. And she pushes a little bit hard, harder than Emily Young. Outside to BCO. And Nasser got used up her hands. Samantha Bricio inside, off the block, sharp angle. Just finding a way to put the ball down consistently. That's her 10th kill on 21 swings. Nasser, one of the best blockers uh, in conference. I'm sure the best blocker on this Oregon State team. Mary Marshall sets out. It's messy. A free ball opportunity and Two hitters taken out of the play, and yet Oregon State still scored. Laura Shout, 22 on the outside. She is long, six foot five, hitting a nice high ball off the block for the Oregon State point. And still errorless in terms of hitting five kills on eight swings. Love to see that as a coach. Because you got that coming the other way, and Bicio. Another big block in front of Bricio. She finds the corner. Very nice court vision. As a hitter, some hitters don't see, but they're attacking. But Samantha Bricio, very mature volleyball player, high volleyball IQ, sees the court, sees the block. You gotta wonder for Bricio what she's thinking. 11 kills she contributes every night, but you'll never find out because she is a quiet leader for this USC team. Saturday. It's Welcome back to Galen Center. USC leading in set number two. Samantha Bricio delivering as always. She leads the conference in service aces. No surprise, she's good today. Well, I talked about her being good for the service line, but she finds a way. High hands off the block. Service ace from the back line, splitting the passer for Oregon State. And then out of the back row, just deadly for the USC Trojans. 11 in kills, two errors, 22 swings. He's hitting 409 today, and you see there, service aces, aces per set, she dominates. And she's dominating when teams know she's getting every set, and that makes it much more difficult. Beautiful isolation set by Taylor Woods, number 21 to Mary-Kate Marshall. Good pass, quick offense. Oregon State looks very strong offensively when they do that. Mary-Kate Marshall along with Tia Scambre of Washington. Strong contenders and candidates for freshman of the year in the conference. USC trying to go to Ogham's right there. Setting the middle, which I like, but hitting there on the last swing. The lead, which was six, now cut to four. Tough serve from Reeder. Monaboo does get the sideline. Oregon State defense was set up right where they want to be, but Ebony Wanabu just powered up ball. This is what she does best. Gets her feet to the ball and just powers it cross court. Bricio service line. Reader, great pass. Shout's got to make something of it. You don't want to leave Bricio on that line. And Bricio is human. Yeah, she's been so effective. I think that's her first air out of the back row. But you see the confidence from USC going to Bricio as often as possible. Our Pac-12 intermission report will be filled with more volleyball. Washington and 17th ranked Arizona State highlights. Joe Savage will take you through Cal and Colorado and what's happening over there as well. And of course, we'll update you on everything that we're seeing in this match. And Oregon State already has more wins on the road than all of last year. Set got away from Woods maybe a little bit. 
Marshall, big swing. Bricio digs. Oh, two players. Everybody's okay. You're doing traffic. Oregon, wow, look at that dig by Samantha Brizio and then Ebony Wanabu hitting the seam right between two defenders. Powers it down for USC. Gary Laskevich talking with Rachel Buner, his sophomore defensive specialist. Rachel Before Buner has been, excuse me, very effective, but he's just telling her what kind of adjustments she can make to slow down Bricio and Wanabu for USC. Well, if you're enjoying the volleyball today, we got more volleyball for you on Wednesday, 7.30. East St. Trojans travel north to Berkeley to take on Cal Bears, or you could watch 10th ranked Oregon and 16th ranked Arizona live coverage Wednesday at 7.30 on Pac-12 Networks and Pac-12 Now. Check pac-12.com for games in your area. Taking a look at the standings, I mean, this is a strong conference. And Terry Laskep telling us maybe the strongest conference, the strongest he has seen the conference. Well, just in terms of depth, I mean, it's a dogfight every Pac-12 match. There's no easy games. Cal is definitely rebuilding and struggling to find what they need to do for a win, but both Cal and Washington State at 0-7. And, and you look at Colorado there. Looks like they're at the bottom of the pack, but that's being the bottom of the top as they nearly upset undefeated Stanford a couple of days ago. You're right, the number one team in the country, Stanford, gets a scare of Colorado going five sets. Colorado last year beat then top ranked Washington as well, so Colorado's kind of giant killers, so they're a very talented team. Marshall. Pizza Segola goes to Wanabu. Beautiful set, but the block was waiting for it. Ruggins has been delivering consistently. Schreier always delivers. Number seven, Buner. Rachel Buner, the DS for Oregon State, has been doing some good job keeping that ball alive for Oregon State, but USC gets the kill. Mick Haley said of Hannah Schreer before the game, he always shows up, and maybe that's the best compliment you can have from a national championship coach like that. He counts on her. Beautiful set, crushed by Brown. Love the attack out of the middle, in transition, off a dig, Taylor with so much confidence in Amanda Brown. Marshall Riddens. And oh no, he cannot leave that in the hole for Wanabu. Well, Rachel Buner is stepping into the hole, but Ebony Wanabu for USC, you see her right there, number seven, has so much offensive range. And we saw Wanabu at the beginning of the year, as you mentioned, coming off of that back injury, struggling. Mick Haley wanted to get her to this point, where she was a little more fit, and where she was able to play six rotations. It's made a difference today. Marshall from the back court picks up another kill. Well, you see the confidence that USC had in Samantha Bricia. Oregon State has that confidence in freshman Mary Kate Marshall running out of the back row for a big Oregon State kill. Brown serves. Free ball. Mary Kate Marshall's back court. Not the prettiest rallies is another free ball opportunity. Young outside. USC wins the longest rally of the day so far and captures the second set. So we're split. One set of peace. We knew it was going to be a dog by like these two teams pushing to make sure that they come out with a win. Coming up right after these messages, we're going to take you to our Pac-12 Network Studio for Pac-12 Intermission Report with Bill Savage. <laughs> Welcome into 
our San Francisco studios. I'm Jill Savage. Oregon State and USC split after the first two matches. Two other matches are in progress currently on Pac-12. We're to first check in with Washington State and 17th ranked Arizona State. Coach Ann Greeley and the Cougars looking to break an eight-match losing streak against Sun Devils. Match tied at 25. Billy McDonald and J.C. Harris get the one-point lead for Washington State. Their second match point now. Uh, again, it's McDonald setting it up for Harris, who tips it over soft. The ASU can't cover. The Cougs take the first set, 28-26. Alexis Austin and the Buffs welcome Cal to Boulder on Pac-12 Network's Mountain and Bay Area. Early for set, Colorado tied at two. Austin comes in from the wing, hammers it down the line. Colorado now leads 3-2. Set point number two. Colorado leading 24-23. Nikki Gomber's serve is long, so the Buffs take the first at 25-23. Colorado now up two sets over Cal. Coming up next on Pac-12 Networks, if you're in Oregon and Washington, you'll get the women's soccer match between Washington State and Oregon. Everyone else gets number one ranked Stanford against Utah. Stanford was pushed to five sets on Friday night, so we'll see how that goes here coming up next. Stay with us. Your Pac-12 Sports Report update coming up next. Open. I'm Jill Savage with this Pac-12 Sports Report update. Every week across all sports here on Pac-12 Network, we have some amazing plays, but which ones are worthy enough to be called the 12 best? Here are some of the nominees. Utah, Oregon State tied in double overtime. Devontae Booker takes the handoff 19 yards for the game-winning touchdown. Here's another look as Booker sheds several arm tackles to give the Utes the win in double overtime. Men's water post, Stanford hosting number one SC Saturday. B.J. Churnside rips one past the defenders. Stanford will go on to win 10-9. to One more look, Churnside goes to the bottom left for the game where that's USC's first conference loss of the season. And UCLA at Cal. Jared Goff tosses it up to Chris Harper. Comes down with a one-handed touchdown catch for the Bears. Cal will go on to lose 36-34 to UCLA. Well, that will be all on Pac-12 Sports Report. Coming up Monday night at 9 p.m., Ashley Adamson and J.B. Long will have the final say on which one make the 12 best. Big scheme apart, breaking down what is a very fascinating Pac-12 football season and a nice feature on UCLA women's soccer. That all comes up on Monday night at 9 p.m. on Sports Report. Stay with us. We'll get you back to your match coming up next. Welcome back to Los Angeles. Pac-12 Women's Volleyball on the Pac-12 Network's tie. One set apiece, Oregon State and USC. Nick Haley joining us now. And Coach, the second set much better, obviously, for your team. What was the difference? Well, I think our passing, for one, uh, we reduced errors. We gave a lot of uh, three points in the first set. Didn't look like we were comfortable at all. Um, I think we got kind of comfortable with the opponent's uh, speed, so uh, that was a good thing for us. And I, I really liked the way Bricio passed there. She was, she was really nails in that second set. I thought defense was the key to your second set win, too. I thought you made some better stops. What did you do specifically? Well, we changed our defense a little bit. Um, it's points in their rotation, so that helped us a little bit. They were uh, they were scoring at will in a couple of places, and we just adjusted. We constantly try to make adjustments like that. Thanks so much, Mick, okay. for the time. Thank you. Let's take a look, though, sets, Holly, going back. First, starting with Mary Kate Marshall. Mary Kate Marshall has been so effective and impressive. Freshman taking big swings, already nine kills, hitting 296, and then Samantha Riccio out of the back row. Getting it done, passing, and then putting the ball away, finding the corner, 11 kills, hitting 333. You see the hitting percentage from USC went way up, now hitting 347. Very effective second set. That's been the difference. Blocks, Oregon State still has the edge. Yeah, and as you talk about the hitting percentages, USC in the second set alone, hitting 421. Meanwhile, Samantha Bricio with his 11 kills. You mentioned most of them coming from the court. 
She needs help though, Holly. She's doing everything she can. Absolutely, but Ebony Wanabu, eight of 18 attempts, hitting 444, zero errors. Those are the types of numbers we're used to seeing from Ebony Wanabu, and she's going to help reseal a lot. Now, middles, if the middles can help take the pressure off for USC, they'll start to roll. Yeah, that's going to be the big difference for them. Meanwhile, Mary Gate Marshall as advertised for Oregon State. One of the things Coach Terry Lukevich for Oregon State was impressed with. I mean, everything about Mary Kate Marshall's game, but the consistency. She's a freshman playing at this level, and she's been consistent every match. Yeah, boy, Ebony Monaboo is looking the best she has looked this season. You see the, the shape, the physical conditioning, finding her rhythm, high contact, really good at getting her feet to the ball. But Coach McKaylee calls Ebony Wanabu something special. She can't do it all. Back the hole in the block, gets plenty of room. Amanda Brown continues to deliver. Amanda Brown, unstoppable on that particular play. They actually had one time where they stopped on a block, but really putting a lot of pressure on the left side blocking for USC. Yeah. Oh, that ball just out by a hair. Brown hitting 545 through the first two sets. She's a great compliment to Mary Kate Martel. Bricio, back line. Crushing service ace, her third of the day. Even when your passers are there, the power that you have to control off Samantha Bricio's serve is challenging. Number six in black, Hannah Troutman, a freshman. The best passer, according to Taylor Skevich, of his defensive specialists. And there she controls that one. Nasser, so important that she put that away. Erica Nasser out of the middle. That's her eighth, excuse me, that's her fifth kill on 12 swings. Taylor Woods. Serves easily handled there, and it goes to the middle. So they're getting their middle in. Very important. Ogun with her fifth kill. When USC passes the ball well, you see the confidence that Luce Pizza Sigo has in sitting the middle. Yeah, fifth kill, as you mentioned, on eight swings or nine swings. I mean, it's really a difference on eight swings. And again, same spot scores. That's just a heads up play. Smart. Erica Nasser sees the big block in front of her, knows the short tip right over the block is open. That's back to back kills for Nasser. Emily Wilma's coming in on the right side for Oregon State. The first time we have seen her today, number one in black. Wilma's a sophomore from Long Beach State. And there she is. Hadn't seen a lot of time this year. An interesting move in there for Terry Laskovich. Wannabe. Sky. Defenders having a day of it. Trying to stop Ebony Wannabe. Trying to make adjustments. Going more shallow into the court. And then Ebony Wannabe turns the ball deep down the line. Ebony Wannabe has that kind of offensive range for USC. Tough serve and a free ball to USC. Wanabu handles it. Wanabu again. Again, Young goes outside to run. Big swing by number 11, Elise Ryan. Important to get some kills on the left side for her. She's finding her rhythm only back in the lineup for the last two weeks full time. Wanabu, the 2013 ACA National Freshman of the Year, gets service ace. <laughs> Michaela clinching in front of us as she served. Well, just crawled over the net, getting that ball to drop in front of the defensive specialist for Oregon State. She has been the difference for USC in this last set and a half. Wanabu returning to form.
Bricio calls everybody off. Sit and play. Nasser, right behind the setter. And so she goes in front instead. Erica Nasser has been fantastic in this third set. That's her fourth kill. Well, interesting there for me is watching Wanabu try to dig and dig and dig. She doesn't play a lot of backcourt historically. They're trying to get her more experience there. First time Emily Young has tried to run the middle for USC. A little bit of misconnection with Hannah Schreier. The pass was there for USC to run it. And Holly, that's so difficult for her to find that rhythm kind of mid-season, isn't it? To get that middle connection really solid. Yes, but Emily Young's a setter, so she's always Wait, getting really setting ups. But yeah, it's just having the confidence in the chemistry with that middle attacker to get her the ball where she needs it. She goes away from the middle that time and gets a kill from Rudden. Second kill for Elise Rudden. From the left side, Oregon State's block is there, just not over the net to stop that ball. Kaylee takes a moment, just says a couple of words to Emily Young. And Anne Marie Schmidt came in thinking that there was a serving specialist there, but they were saying, no, it's Oregon State ball. The block, the ball got past the Oregon State block. So tied up at seven apiece, Anne Marie Schmidt is going to serve for the women of Troy. USC needs stops defensive stops big block by USC number 20 Emily Young on the right side and you know, Emily Young came out of sports performance club program during her high school years they've always had a playbook for her here at USC Schreer crushes the overpass and the Schreer good at cleaning up that overpass in position high snapper an easy kill for USC and Schreer has had an interesting career at USC. Whenever McHaley has called upon her, she has come up big, including on the overdig there as Schreer puts it away. USC leading set number three in the early stakes. Ebony Wanabu been all the difference. Ebony Wanabu is back in shape, feeling good, getting her feet to the ball. Look at the power on the right side offensively. So good, burning it down the line. Great offensive range and then an ace from the back line off the tape. Last year's ACA National Freshman of the Year, Wanabu hurt her back during the summer and has spent the first part of the season getting in shape. Mick Haley telling us she has made the commitment. Yoga, her nutrition, stretching, getting herself in playing shape and Holly, we are seeing the benefits of it now. Absolutely paying off and it really balances off Samantha Riccio who carries such a big responsibility for this USC team. Amanda Brown as the Midas touch today picks yet another kill. Ninth kill on 13 swings, hitting 615. <laughs> Emily Young! Perfect pass. Instead of running the middle, Emily Young calls her own number and watch the left. It's very deceptive. Looks like she's going to set then just lines up and whacks it for the USC kill. Every USC setter has a special gift. That is Young's gift. She's very deceptive, as you say. And that's the first smile we've seen of her today. Amanda Brown with her 10th kill. She is unstoppable for Oregon State. And Taylor Woods delivering a nice ball for her to attack. Young outside to Bricio. Bricio goes wide. No ball. So hard when you get every set. Teams will key on you harder and harder. 
to get a kill all the time. That time, this is what makes sure she puts it away. Samantha Bricio elevates fine in the corner. This is an out of system play off bump set, but smart swing to the quarter for Samantha Bricio, number two in white. And Holly, does she not have those pure looking arm swing too? I mean, it's just perfection. It's smooth, just the way she gets to the ball, she moves so well. Alice Pizzasigola serving. Anabu puts that up, said, beat me behind, and they go over. Middle attack for USC, Alicia Pizza Sigola to Alicia Ogums. The confidence, the chemistry is there. Starts with a free ball, Ebony Wanabu puts up a perfect pass, spreading out the offense. Ogums eight with the kill. Kaylee talks to us a lot about that connection and how Ogums believes in her setter. Holly, how critical is it that they believe that they're going to get a great ball? In my mind, that's part of the setter's job, making your hitter believe that you're going to give them a ball that they can hit all the time, giving them confidence. It's so important. Michaela talking about when he was a setter, saying if it was a great set, he'd go to his hitter and say, you were great there. But if it was a, a, a missed opportunity, he would say, my, my bad, I'll do better. Wanted his hitters to feel like king of the world. I think that's important. Mary Kate Marshall finds a line. Really nice offensive decisions for a freshman facing a huge block in front of her, but really making some good decisions. I'm very impressed with Mary Kate Marshall. Sydney Francis back to serve. Pizza Segola goes outside. Wanna go! USC's offense looking good. Credit Alice Pizza Segola with the sweet set to Ebony Wanabu, who just powers down the line. It's October 19th, and USC may have just woken up to look like the team that they finished last year looking like. This is what we're used to. Blocking, but this time out of the back row, effective block from the Trojans. Recio on the back line, serving. A great pass. Results in a March kill. Well, Mary Kim Marshall knows that USC plays the right back defender for the tip right behind the block, so that deep high line swing is a kill. And McKay telling us he made some adjustments in certain rotations defensively and that was difference. Yeah. Looks like Oregon State may have adjusted back to it. And meanwhile, as Taylor Wood waits to serve, there is a question at the scoring table. Yes, Coach McKay says Oregon State only has 11. And it looks like the official scorer agrees. On well, terms of the score, it's saying that the score should be 16-11 and not 16-12. The officials agreed. They adjusted. We adjusted ours as well then. And Taylor Woods now back to serve. NASA sees it and grabs it. That's what tough serving can do for you. It allows your team to score easy points. Taylor Woods. Gets U.S. in trouble and an easy kill at the net for Nasser. Back to Wanabu. She continues to crush. Bricio, perfect pass. Stayed on the ground since she's in front of the line. NASA works with a little, little set and a net violation against Ogums of USC. But that last rotation for USC, some big digs, especially by Taylor Whittingham, libero for USC. So just a miscue on the back row sets to Samantha Bricio and then Ogums a little over aggressive on that block. Oh, yeah. Couple 
couple of messy rallies. USC leading by four. Shrera Ruddens and Manabu up front for the women of Troy. Ogum serving. From the back court, she flies in. Mauricio. No miscue there. Alice Pizza Zagoa sets a beautiful pipe to Samantha Bricio, who is so confident. Look at that. She sees the seam, the face between the two blockers, and attacks it. Terry Lukevich calls a timeout. His Oregon State team has split every Pac-12 series this season. They want to keep that going. USC's tough. Seven. There's a reason Samantha Bricio is on the ticket at USC. She is the tick for them. 13 kills, hitting 310, and she's getting some serious support from Ebony Wanabu. It's been a big difference for USC. Ebony Wanabu, 12 of 23 swings, zero errors. Samantha Bricio, 13 kills on 29 swings. So those are big numbers. A little more help out in the middle, and USC's in a good spot. But as an offense, USC in this set, hitting 556, 12 of 18 swings. And taking a look, we don't know if this is going to go four sets, five sets. USC has had such an up and down season. It's at times looked like they put it together, and it certainly looks like right now. Including a big block. That's an area where USC can definitely improve. And Hannah Schreyer and Ebony Wanu have a big stop at the net right there. Specifically, Hannah Schreyer getting most of that. Yeah, and USC out blocking Oregon State. USC last in the conference in blocks per set coming into this match. Oregon State second in conference in blocks per set. Double contact called on Mauricio's hand and an opportunity for the Beavers. Mauricio going for it, tries to use her hand, just a little missed contact. Has a little knowing smile there, a smirk. Mary Kate Marshall makes her pass and she did a great job. What ends? Block, but what an up from Bucicero. All about covering your hitters, being in the right place at the right time. And Aliche Pizza Sigola, watch on this cover play. One arm stab, gets it to drop for Oregon State. Wanaboo's serve is tough. Goes to Wilmez. And it's kicked from the right and shout. Laura Shout with her seventh kill. She's been very effective quiet lately. But good match so far. Ebony Wanabu is so good. It's her offensive range. Six and four, she just well. High contact point, but she can hit the ball straight down or hit it deep. And she sees the court well and moves it around. Very dangerous as a hitter. Wanabu averaging just over two and a half kills per set this season. And she's already got 13 today. Another kill from the right side for Amanda Brown. Also, we're hitting well above her average in kills per set. Amanda Brown is on fire. 11 kills, hitting 562. USC has not had an answer for her today. Yeah, and that's nearly double her average. Oh, my! So fun to see Samantha Bricio just gather herself. Look at power. The block is right, and Samantha Risio just jumps a little higher, knowing that there's nobody there. Bob Boom. I nominate that for Pac-12 best. That was a crushing kill by Santa Bricio. Middle and Brown. 
down again. Able to draw the net violation from USC. Well, the thing I like about the way Amanda Brown plays, she's always on the move, making the blockers move for USC just for attacking the seams. Very effective middle attack for Oregon State. Yeah, Brown is consistent too. Double figure kills now for the last four matches. Hannah Troutman, freshman out of Oregon, back to serve. I'm sorry, comes out of Oregon, Paul Butte. And again, a moment at the scorer's table where they're checking. Emily Young passes on the middle, goes to BCO. Leela Toner, number two in black. A little bit smaller at the net than Briscoe. And really, USC taking advantage of it. Samantha Briscoe feeling it and attacking her as the smaller blocker. Holly, let me ask your advice. As an NCAA champion setter right there, she had Ogum in front of her. They have a significant lead in this set. Would you want her to set Ogum's to get that feel? Or you think just go with your safe bet? Well, I don't think the confidence is there for Emily yet to run that middle like a Alicia Pizza Sigola. So you, you go with what's working, but that's an important thing to establish early in the next set. Set point here as Alice Pizza Sigola serves. Wanna do. All right, it's not pretty, but it is a set victory as USC goes up two sets to one. Again, Ebony Wanabu with her 13th kill on zero, excuse me, 14th kill on zero airs, 25 total attempts. We'll see what adjustments Oregon State makes. This one a bit of a messy rally to end, set number three. Exciting. Welcome back to the Galen Center. USC leading this match two sets to one over Oregon State. Samantha Bricio has been getting hotter as it's gone along. Samantha Bricio dangerous out of the backcourt. Passing, swinging on the left side, finding the corner. And then look at this one, only one blocker in front of her. Second one late. Jumps a little higher, hits a little harder for USC. Taking a look at the numbers, what a difference from the first set which USC dropped to Oregon State. They're functioning on all cylinders. Oh yeah, hitting percentage 408. Actually, hit percentage for both teams extremely high. And then blocks, USC with seven, Oregon State with only four. To me, that's the biggest surprise, but both teams hitting well over 300, which are impressive numbers, and usually would mean a W in your win-loss column. Mick Haley been searching all year, has told us several times, I have every reason to be optimistic. Well, now we can see all those reasons as Mick Haley's team has come together and won his last two sets off of great defense and great offense. Still looking at their middles more involved. Terry Lukevich, meanwhile, has all the talent. He has a Oregon State team who can do a little bit of everything. Reader sets shout. Perfect. What a nice looking play back to Mary Kate Marshall. But the Beavers need to hit the ball. Like that. Seven kill for Laura Shout 22. USC playing the tip defense very well. Well, they had practice. There's like three tips in a row. Smack it. Toner search. Perfect pass from Bricio. She says, I can play the tip game too. 
Taylor Woods, the center for Oregon State, 21, having a fantastic season, especially defensively. She was laying down for that one. Didn't expect Shao to reach back. Bricio, back to serve. When she gets hot from the line, similar to a Mike Hancock from Penn State or Cassie Strickland from Washington, she's dangerous and can really change the whole match. And that's what Taylor Skevich really said happened when they were playing Washington. Strickland got hot, ripped off a string of serves, and it looks just like that. Two consecutive aces from Brisa. Confidence that your team can get when you're on the line, easier to score points than the other team, just on the defensive when the server is hot. <laughs> oh my, ripping it. Shout knowing she needs to try to put that away. The Beavers fighting to get Bricio off the line. And they do not. A net violation on Oregon State. And Bricio will go back to serve again. Oregon State not happy with that net call. Say that was absolutely not us. Watch the replay. Could not tell there. Marshall. It's in her own hands, turns it down the line. What a set by number two in black, Leela Toner. She was the kill leader for this Oregon State team last year, playing a different role, but doing it well. Darby Reader, up serve. Middle, going Ogums. Taylor Whittingham, so solid, delivering again and again, but the block of Oregon State. Taylor Woods, the setter for Oregon State, playing some fantastic defense. And here, the Oregon State block does their job. Wanabu, again, adds her total. The emergence of Ebony Wanabu, 15 kills, zero errors, high percentage. Attacker for USC is really helping them roll in this match. I mean, let's just take that in for a second. 15 kills and zero errors. She has been incredible. As has Amanda Brown. Good point. 13 kills on 19 swings. Hitting 579 is 17. Amanda Brown in black. Wanabu. He threw the block, but Pizza Gola picks it up. Oh, you see some scary communication at USC. And it's Amanda Brown again. 14 kills for Amanda Brown. Wow, the confidence in her. Taylor Wood just knows, even with two blockers there, Amanda Brown is lethal. Bricia passing perfectly. Mary-Kate Marshall comes flying in. And Wannabe rips it down. Big dig by the libero, number 16, Taylor Whittingham for USC to keep that ball alive. Perfect location and then it's a Seagull able to feed Ebony Wannabe for another kill. That's 16 kills and 30 swings. And that is a season high for Ebony Wannabe. <laughs> Young throughout the Ruddens. Oh, Amanda Brown, how did she make that work? That ball was at low and pass. Amanda Brown, so smart, off the hands of the blocker. 15 kills. 
Those are big numbers out of the middle. Hard to get that many kills out of the middle unless your team is passing extremely well. Awesome dig from Oregon State to quiet Ellie Young. But then Wanamaker keeps adding to tally 17 now. This time Ebony Wanamaker is in the back row and still able to contribute offensively. That was one of the keys to their loss. USC's loss to Washington in the regionals last year. Ebony Wanamaker went out of the match. She was dominating Krista Van Zandt. On the other side, able to stay in the match and be the difference. Brown trying so hard to make that work. A little bit of a misconnection there. Brown and Tillwoods have been so successful all day long. Perfect pass. Winningham goes outside. Bricio. Oh, they contact that first ball a little bit messy. Brizio says, you're not going to do this one. She's right. It's wide. Caitlin Driscoll, number 12 in black, back in the lineup, giving Oregon State a little bit more size at the net defensively. Young says, you will respect me and defend me. Emily Young, you cannot be surprised that she's going to take a swing. Nasser a little bit late getting on the ball for Oregon State. Four kills on six swings for Emily Young. They all the same way, but they're not defending her. And there it is again. That is the same play. A setter who likes to attack, especially a left-handed swing, you have put a blocker on her. Especially a six-foot-two setter who's been a hitter for this team for the last few years, in addition to being able to set. She's now smiling and feeling good. We were talking about Emily Young needing to find confidence and comfort while well, she got it. Mary Kate Marshall off the face and head of Samantha Bricia. 13 kills for freshman Mary Kate Marshall, number 15 in black. That one out of the back row. Bricio picks up and Emily Young having a great time attacking. Why set the ball if you're that good offensively and your team is passing it up there? Six for eight, hitting 750 is Emily Young, number 20. And as Emily Young comes out to see Gola, perhaps thinking she goes, hey, she's in the backcourt. Look, I'm in the backcourt, but even if I was in the front, I can't do that. Special talent. All the way outside. And goes into the net. USC still playing with their lineup. Jordan Dunn, number five, the freshman middle blocker in the lineup for USC. Oregon State just trailing by four, but all the momentum is going to win of Troy's way. Pac-12 Women's Volleyball is presented by Tashikara. We've got the ball, you bring the game. USC certainly has brought their game. They are really strong right now. Having a lead in set number four. Oregon State though in it for sure. Thanks in part to Amanda Brown who's having season high 15 kills today. Amanda Brown, the middle blocker number 17 has been unbelievable. 15 kills on 23 swings. 522 hitting percentage. Three players for Oregon State hitting in double figures. And that is in part what kept them so tight. This Oregon State team does not make a lot of errors. Erica Nass with her 11th kill. Also impressive numbers out of the middle. Both middle high contributors for Oregon State. Yeah, and that's just the opposite of what we're seeing from USC. Where they're not setting middle that much, or at least in the early sets especially. A service ace for Lila Tony. 
The interesting thing about that ace by Lily Toner, she miscontacted that ball. <laughs> and USC did not know what to do with it, but it ends up in the ace column. Looks the same on the stat sheet, and she's happy about it. Had a big smile, though. Outside to Wannabe, who adds to her tally, another kill. The tough thing about defending Ebony Wannabe on that, she's got the offensive range to power it down your throat. So you don't want to be too shallow. It just opens up tip. That's the great thing about Ebony Wannabe as an offensive force. It looks if she's on your team. There you go. And Bricio, meanwhile, in the back line again, she's had four, or sorry, five services today. Mary Kate Marshall goes right at it. Beautiful dig from Reeder. And it's hit away by the freshman. Assist Erica Nasser, number 40 in the middle. She is a character and is loving the fact that she puts up a beautiful assist for Mary Kate Marshall and the Oregon State Beavers. Love it when there's as much joy in giving a great assist as anything else. Reeder. Quietly doing a fantastic job for the Beavers. As is Whittingham for USC. Reader set. Marshall says go line. Woods back again to Marshall. Take something off of it beautifully. Through the walk goes Rudman. Defense has improved dramatically for USC in good spots, especially their net defense. Elise Redden's able to turn that dig into a kill from the left side. Runs with 10 kills today. We mentioned she's had limited play this season due to injury. It's double what she's put up the rest of the season. Setting air for Oregon State. This is a crucial point. If they want to stay in this match, they need to make a move. They do. It's a four-point lead. That's the largest we've seen. They had this earlier as well for USC. And Mary Kate Marshall delivers. Trailing only by three. Some pressure from the service line could really benefit Oregon State. But there, Mary Kate Marshall again with another kill on the left side. Wannabe, it's way inside. But perfect for Marshall. Mary Kate Marshall, 15 black, is so effective on this particular swing. The ball set wide, and she's able to swing it so quick to turn it down the line. That is not easy to do. No, but she does it often, Holly. I'm watching her tendency is clearly line. She likes a little bit of room, and she'll take it. And there you see why Ebony Wanabu is so good. Getting her feet to the ball, they adjusted in the court, and she hits it wide. Okay, note to self, Pizza Segola came out. Emily Young is up front, number 20 in white. She will crush the ball with her left hand if, you, if Oregon State doesn't start defending her. Amanda Brown with 16 kills. Number 17 and both middles have been so good for Oregon State. Beautiful dig from Reeder. Balls out to Driscoll. On a boot. She loves the cross court and still gets it. Ebony Wanbu has the range to put it down the line. We've seen it, we've heard it, seen it through the middle of the court. This one, sharp back cross court again. I think that's her favorite, but she's going to put it where you're not. Absolutely, and Buner slaps the floor for her. Season high kills today with 20. Yeah, her season high was 15. She passed it a while ago, going cross court here. Amanda Brown matches her number with her 17th kill, remaining dominant in this match. Matches her number and is just one off of her 
season high. Or sorry, her career high. She's already got a season high. Lead is just three for USC. Taylor Whittingham stepping to the libero role, doing a great job this year for USC. As Natalie Haglin are all everything for the women of Troy graduated last year. Taylor Whittingham with, had 25 digs on Friday night. She's been equally impressive in some good spots, slowing down this Oregon State offense. Yeah, she also really sets well. I mean, she has had a lot of opportunity today to get to those. Hitters. From the backcourt, Marshall, no touch. Point, USC. The net defense looks much improved for USC, as does the backcourt D, and it's why USC is scoring. Four-point lead for women of Troy. It's getting hot in here. Saturday, it's a play. Fans having a great time here as they see this USC team return form and Evan Wanabu leading that charge. We'll talk about returning to form the National Player of the Year last year. Ebony, Ebony Wanabu is proving that she's going to start playing where she left off last year and she is putting up fantastic numbers. 20 kills on 38 swings, zero errors. And it, she was now no freshman of the year last year. You said Nash player of the year. Oh, I just know that Krista Van Zandt of Washington yes, I'm sorry, Krista. might be watching this and saying, hey, hold on a second. Where's Bob? Emily Young, how about it? Emily Young has really turned it on specifically this set with some big kills. And then you see the lock there. As the sweat comes up off the floor, it's a five-point lead for the Trojans. It's a must-win set for the Beavers, and a service error opens the door. Only a crack for Oregon State. Big front row for Oregon State, and Taylor Woods a very good defender and server on the back line. Short, Nassar, and Shout, excuse me, Nassar and Driscoll up front. And of course, Mary Marshall also an option in the backcourt. Unfortunate serving air right there as Oregon State tries to stay in this match. Oregon State lost to UCLA on Friday. In a tough match. And up to now, they have split every Pac-12 series. They'd hope to leave here with at least that. Up high was shout. Three ball. Driscoll perfect pass. Yeah, they run the middle. But it's been waited for. Beautiful hustle play by USC. And then Jordan Dunn ends that rally with a big block at the Met. The freshman middle blocker who sat at the beginning of this match in now. And she sat out the beginning of this match, didn't play the first two sets at all, the first three sets really. In part because McHaley said, I'm going to go with my veterans first. And what he found in his veterans was some momentum. BCO. What a dig from Marshall. Uh oh. They're chasing it down. And it gets away from Shout. USC has finally really put some pressure on Oregon State, especially on the defensive side. Seven point lead for USC, the largest of match, not even just the set, they have found their rhythm. Pizza Segola serving, Wanu and Bricio in the front court, on either side of the freshman bed. Outside. Oh, she does. Samantha Brisa, when she has one blocker in front of her, I swear she jumps about eight inches higher and just wants to crush it and does. Match point for the women of Troy. Beautiful set back, Wannabe takes a big swing. Woods, 
Woods goes upside. And it ends on a one up blue block. The change from the beginning of that match to the end of the match from what we saw from USC was night and day. And I think if you're USC, you want to see a lot more of what you saw at the end. Ebony Wanabu with 20 goals today. She had had a 15 as her high this season. And she ended with a big block. SC happy to get another victory after the tough loss on Friday. They're where they want to be right now. There are smiles on faces of the USC coaches. Meanwhile, for Oregon State, they have to go on the road against Washington State. They've got some or tough road ahead for them. Arizona's and Stanford and Cal. Well, I think Oregon State, they did them things really good. Out of the middle, their offense was amazing. They need a little bit more help on the left side offense and the right side from those two players, and they can be much more well-rounded. USC celebrates. That'll be it from the Galen Center in the Los Angeles where after dropping the first set, USC comes back to win three consecutive sets and they are smiling, celebrating, and perhaps a sigh of relief for Holly McPeak and the rest of our Pac-12 crew. I'm Amory Anderson saying so long from the Galen Center in Los Angeles. Brent Stanford Volleyball arrives in Salt Lake City to play their fourth.